Do you want to fly your FPV quadcopter like the pros? Or at least not hit, well, you know, everything? What you need is a simulator. Did you know that an FPV simulator can get you better and faster, cheaper? Well, it can. So today on RC with Adam, we're going to look at three very popular simulators and show you which one Adam likes best right now. Simulator! Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and today we're going to do something very, very fun that I've been wanting to do for a while now. And what we're talking about are FPV quadcopter simulators, like for drone racing or just, you know, freestyle type of flying. Simulators are amazing. Even cheap simulators can be incredibly helpful to get better, faster, and do it very cheaply. Today we're going to be looking at FPV Freerider, Liftoff, and the DRL or Drone Racing League Simulator. Now, I appreciate your time, so I'm going to give you the bottom line up front. What I would recommend is the DRL Racing Simulator. I think it has more to offer than some of the other simulators. Now, FPV Freerider is about five bucks. Um, the DRL Racing Simulator is about ten dollars, and then the liftoff simulator is about uh, I think twenty dollars, fifteen or twenty dollars. Um, so the DRL one is actually cheaper, and I think personally, I think it's actually better than liftoff. But I want you to decide for yourself. And so today we're going to be playing all three of them. I'm going to kind of show you uh, the differences between them, why I like certain ones over other ones, and just kind of what you can expect. Um, if you get this simulator. And so we're going to kick it off with FPV Freerider. All right, here we go, FPV Freerider. Now, um, on my screen, I'm not sure if it's because it's a larger screen, but it's kind of coming up a little weird. Um, it's not filling the screen quite right, so please bear with me. Um, but I, I think it's just because of my monitor. This one is pretty basic. Um, we've got uh, six different levels. Over here on the right-hand side, input USB controller. Speaking of that, I am going to be using my FlySky FSI 6, and I have it connected to the computer via um, USB, and it's the FlySky SM100 cable. Over here on the right-hand side, we have the calibrate controller, and, so, and that what, that's what you want to do when you first connect your uh, controller. So I have had a little bit of trouble. It's been kind of finicky trying to get my transmitter to work with FPV Freerider but I did get it working. It's just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And, and by the way, I'm on a Mac. So custom settings right here. I just wanna show you guys, this is how I have this set up. Um, this is, this doesn't really, like you don't get the beta flight experience um, in terms of like the making it look like a, a flight controller configurator software. Um, but this is what I have it set up to. I did change, I can't remember exactly what I changed, but I did change, I think, some of the physics, changed the camera angle and stuff. Um, and this is basically to get it fly, to get it to fly like how I fly my five inch quadcopter um, for like freestyle flight. So just kind of just flying around having fun. So that's how I have this set up. All right, now let's get to the real stuff here. Let's go to like this uh, pl playground level or something like this. So I do have, I think I have lens distortion on, or I, or I have like blur. Um, and this is the widest field of view that you can get on here, which is not really like that wide. It's, it's fairly wide, I guess. Like I, I mean, it's, it's, it's plenty wide, um, but I feel like it could be a little wider. It, again, it looks kind of weird because it's very wide, but not very tall for sure. So we have this little playground level. This is a good one. You want to practice like your your tight tight in flying, very much like precision kind of flying. A couple years ago, I did a drone camp, like a summer camp kind of thing. Uh, it was actually the Flymore Academy, fun fact. Um, and this was the simulator that we used. We used Freerider FPV uh, to teach all these kids how to fly, and it was really cool um, seeing them like pick this up and learn how to fly after just like a few days. Um, cause you know, in the, in the morning they'd come in, we, the first thing we do is, um, fly on the simulator and it's great. Simulators are great cause it's basically just a game. You know, you're just playing a game and learning how the stuff works. So that's, what's so great about simulators is you can, you can like learn by doing and not worry about the consequences, which is, um, 
pretty hard to do <laughs> in real life. Um, you know, I mean, sometimes you just have to, you just have to learn by doing and you just deal with the consequences, but um, it's nice if you can do it cheaply and safely and all that sort of stuff. So that's what we've got going on. Let's go, let's go to one more level here. Let's go to the island. I think this is like kind of a larger level. Yeah. So anyway, it doesn't, it does, it's not like exactly like real life, but it's pretty good. Like for five bucks, you, you can absolutely learn how to fly on this simulator and and get skills and it will translate to the real world so i really like that um you know you're, you're limited with your graphics and your physics like that like i just tap that thing and then i just tap that pole and then it was just like well you're done man but if you tweak around with the settings you can get it to fly um pretty well and you can get it to really be a good like simulator to simulate how your quadcopter flies oh thought I was able to fly. Wow, wow, wow. And here we have Liftoff. Now, Liftoff, I've been playing Liftoff for several years now. I heard about it from Flight Test. It is good. Okay, that's really what I've used to really get a lot better. But the physics and stuff just seem a little weird. But anyway, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So usually what I do, honestly, I've never done the multiplayer thing. Um, you got all the options for your game graphics audio controls and the reason why I mention that is because um, for the controls you're going to want to set up your controller and calibrate it and then for the graphics you may want to really turn the graphics down like uh, what do I have it doesn't uh, quality settings simple yeah I have it set to simple um, but you might you know depending on, on what your computer can handle you might want it set to fast or fastest um, in fact, let me set mine to fast because because I don't really care about graphics very much. But I will say that if you are into graphics, Liftoff does have some pretty good graphics and they do have some pretty cool levels as well. I have used Liftoff pretty much exclusively for freestyle flying. And so pretty much what I'll do is just click on free flight um, right here and we'll, we'll we'll check out the racing thing in a bit. But from what I've seen of it, unless I'm doing it wrong just really don't like it it's just very strange um let's go to one of their newer levels they do have several several of these le levels they have joshua bardwell's yard so you know i mean that's pretty cool they have bando city uh russian woodpecker that's the that's their newest level um bando city i actually like bando city we're gonna go to bando city fault let's just start let's start here We'll start here, and so, so with um, so obviously, <clears throat> I think you can tell already that you you're gonna get a lot better graphics and a whole lot more game uh, with liftoff than FPV Free Rider. For example, here we actually have the um, the static on the screen, and we have this OSD overlay, very realistic. Uh, if we press C, we can get rid of the static, so staticky that which is how, pretty much how your camera is gonna look. Or totally clear um, which is I think better so you can focus on like the actual flight you know flying experience but perhaps in some cases for practicing you would want to use the static um, what else let's see if we look at the view we can kind of change the view of the quadcopter here and let me see I'm not sure if this is really gonna matter but this yeah so okay so, yeah so if we go into the flight controller settings here you can see it's I mean it says beta flight right there inspired by beta flight we have this kind of setup here and I don't really think it does like it does change stuff but honestly I haven't really noticed like a whole lot I mean the definitely the rates and the super rates and max and RC Expo here's a really big 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 thing and this is the same with FPV free rider actually with this unless I just don't know how to do this properly the um, pitch and roll rates are locked and if, if if you know how to change that in the in the menu please let me know but if you change the pitch and roll rates they will change together that's a problem because I rarely want my pitch and roll to be the same rates now you can change the super rates which is is uh, basically the end of stick travel so as you get towards the end you know either either extreme either end point of your stick 
you can get you know a lot more or a lot less travel usually everybody wants a lot more travel so you can do a quick flip if you move your stick all the way over um, and then rc expo also locked so what's up with that lift off uh, spoiler alert, DRL doesn't have that problem, so that's why I like DRL. Anyway, um, so these are the rates that I have here. Um, wow, these are, these are, what is going on with these rates? These are pretty horrible rates. Um, I'm going to need to give this like a lot more expo because I was just flying it around and it felt really weird. So let's do this actually. Well, all right, let's do, let's do like 50% expo. Let's do 20% expo and then I think we should turn these down to like 90 but then give them a little bit of super a little bit of superness so for roll let's go up to like I don't know 220 so another thing about making these adjustments like I am here to the flight controller basically the the sensitivity and the the roll rate and pitch rate and yaw rate um, this really doesn't reflect real life very well and it doesn't really reflect beta flight very well um, beta flight is the flight configurator software that you use to to change these settings on your quadcopter in real life and so these like the, the, really they i can't take these settings and these rates and then apply them to my quadcopter it just doesn't it doesn't work even though you're supposed to be able to have like you know, basically the same setup. I mean, you can change propellers and battery types and camera types and all this other stuff and change the weight of the quadcopter, but I'm not really sure if it uh, makes that much of a difference. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, let's do some flying here. Let's see how these rates work for me. Oh my gosh, oh my, what is, whoa, this is very, very different, um, but I'm getting used to it. Now, I've been, I, I've been flying like a different quadcopter uh, lately so this is very feels very very different but anyway here we go so look at this flight experience definitely a lot more than FPV Freerider like a lot um, and and these are like some of the worst graphic settings that I have on here but you can really you know I mean it's the same same kind of principle um, it behaves enough like real life and you can have these real life uh, scenarios and settings and really use it to simulate like you're flying in real life and it can really work really well um look at that very cool i'm not sure what my uh i'm not sure what my camera angle is at let's see what my camera angle is at oh 26 degrees so that's pretty low so let's say let's put it up to like 45 degrees that could also be why this quadcopter feels so weird. So now we, we have a higher camera tilt angle, which means we can fly fly faster while looking straight ahead. Oh man, I just hit that. Let me, let me put the camera angle down a little bit too, so we're not so we're not blazing blazing fast here. So the physics are good um, in this, but and, and like they're better than FPV Free Rider. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. So here we are at our workbench, which is actually basically like a picnic table um, in, in the middle of an abandoned building. Um, and so you can change all kinds of stuff. So it is very cool. Like it's very, it's very, very cool. Look at all these different props that you can have. The thing is my thing, and I'm not, I'm not trying to diss lift off at all, but I just, I just don't need it. I just don't really need like that many different types of propellers. Like, I don't really know if it's going to really make a difference. Like even if I d did my exact same setup, I'm not really sure that it's actually going to fly the same. So you're going to have to kind of adjust stuff to make it fly like your quadcopter flies, you know, in real life. But you can change stuff out. You can change out the motors. Look at all of these different motors. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, look at those graphics, though. Like, what? Like, that's like, that's some photorealistic stuff right there. 
Rotorite CL1. Look at that frame. So normally I do freestyle. Let's try doing a race. There we go. That's a bit better. Oh, much better. Okay. All right. See? Oh, oh, oh. See how I just like slid through that turn? I feel like, oh, it's just, oh. I, it feels so slippery. The quadcopter feels slippery in the air is, is, is how it how it feels um and like i said maybe that's maybe that's just me but that's how it feels for me and like it's really hard to like control like it doesn't feel as locked in as a quadcopter feels in real life um oh it's just very oh it's very difficult difficult to control yeah so personally all right let's try this race one more time here we go I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my best shot, and I will try. I'm gonna not go too fast to try and actually do this. Oh, see right there, it's just oh, it's like what do I have to do? And then the other thing, I know it sounds like I'm complaining a lot, and I kind of am, uh, because it just for me it does not fly like how my quadcopter flies in real life or any of the quadcopters that I've flown. Just not quite. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, and then, so the other thing is that because I can't change the pitch and rolls uh, individually, the degrees per second, that kind of causes a problem, especially for racing type of stuff because, uh, well, or free, freestyle, because you want to be able to get the quadcopter you know, to, to behave just, just right. You know, and, and if you're stuck with keeping the both the pitch and the roll the same, well, then you just can't, you know, you can't get it exactly how you want it. Oh, I get it. We're supposed to go up here. Okay, and now what? I really wish they would tell me, like, what is going on? See, okay, so that's another aspect of, for the racing thing. I need to get back. How do I get back up? Oh, it just stopped. I just crashed. I lost the race. I think we've seen enough of liftoff. It is a good simulator. You can learn to fly. The graphics are pretty cool. You can do some really cool stuff. But there is one that I think is even better, and that is the DRL Racing Simulator. And we're going to check that out right now. All right. This is the DRL Racing Simulator. They have a pretty sweet intro right here and that is the racer 4 the quadcopters are showing right there which is actually a I believe a seven inch propeller quadcopter pretty pretty big hefty hefty mamma jamma and that's what i've been flying on this one it's pretty good all right so let's actually get into this here uh, let's get in, into the main menu first of all my apologies, let's get that full screen there. Now, first of all, I actually like how they just have it all laid out in tiles and you can scroll or, dra or uh, drag, click click and drag the screen here. It's kind of weird, but um, I haven't even gotten into all this different stuff, uh, like the map editor, community drones. You can, I believe, design um, your own drones and stuff, or they have or workbench, they have this right here. Yeah, so I actually haven't messed around with that. Because, um, again, I don't really care a whole lot about having a quadcopter have a specific type of propeller, aside from just that it's fun. Um, so they get, have the multiplayer as well. I also haven't done that one. But the main things is that they have the tr uh, training, um, they have the freestyle, and then they have solo race. And also right now they have um, the tournaments going on, which uh, we're not going to play this right now but uh, this is what I've been doing and actually today um, they have one coming up and so they do like a online uh, simulator championship and the winner gets to potentially become an actual DLL, DRL racer which is pretty cool because um, I guess that, that shows how much confidence they have in the simulator that they built which I think is pretty cool and I'm not sponsored by DRL by the way I just really 
like what they have. So let's start it out with uh, with freestyle stuff. Let's just let's go to the originals. How about that? Let's go to well, here's a classic one out of service, and let's uh, try this out. So now keep in mind, you know I'm using the DRL Racer 4, which is a seven inch. So it's gonna be a lot heavier, different physics from a five inch, but that's what I've been using on here because I've been doing the racing um, championship thingy. And so I'm just trying to get used to that. The camera tilt is at 45. Again, for racing, uh, field of view is 33. And let's get started here. You can get the static and the overlay and everything. Um, and the graphics as well, you can get them better. I have them pretty low right now. So let's just fly around this a little bit here. The, what sold me on this is that when I'm flying right now, it feels just like my quadcopter. Now, obviously, I've you know played played around with the rates and everything. Um, and again, this is a ooh, oh, uh oh. So you just press R to flip back over. Again, this is like physics-wise a different quadcopter. But it feels locked in. Um, I can steer it. I can maneuver it. I can do all the same stuff that I would do with my quadcopter. So it just it just feels really good. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. Um, but anyway, so you have these really big levels. I mean, this is like a massive level. Like, let's go over here. I'm just going to go full bore. over to this airport like this is this is pretty massive this is definitely yeah I'm gonna say it's definitely bigger than, than the liftoff levels I mean, look at this I'm going all the way over here and again uh, it's, it's you know it's a cool thing because in the simulator you can do this whereas in real life you kind of you know couldn't um, because you know, you, you'd have to be able to have signal connection with the radio and the fpv feed um over this whole distance but in the simulator you don't have to worry about that man you just fly it's all about flying and that's what i like about it because you can just fly and fly and fly and fly and fly and fly you know you can do some do some power loops you know power looping around this thing oh, or mix it up do a do a matty flip what what very cool very very cool so whatever kind of style of flying you like you can you can totally do and again we're just doing freestyle fun stuff right here man like just look look at those, those cranes on my own it's so crazy like, there's a level right here ooh, ooh. getting a little clips right there huh? close to our ground Ooh, oh no, oh no, oh no. What is happening? I really want to fly. It. Oh yeah, right in here. Haha. -ha. Check that out. Oh watch this. Watch, watch, watch. I'm gonna do like a I'm gonna do like a roll and then continue. Oh yeah, what? Down there. And I'm gonna go back. Ready? Ready? Yep. Oh, oh. <laughs> Alright. But see then you don't have to worry like, oh no, I broke my quadcopter. Or, oh no, I lost my quadcopter. Or oh no, I just you know, blew up my quadcopter. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. There's a large blimp suspended in here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I am not a blimp technician, but um, the reason why this blimp is able to suspend like this, even though it's like clearly in multiple pieces, is due to magic, because my understanding is that blimps are magical they run on magic so that's that's why there's a blimp here i guess which makes sense to me look at that diving a blimp riding down the side of a blimp what what backwards johnny fpv style oh what 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 <laughs> this is so much fun oh my gosh but um 
well, I was about to say it gets old eventually, but it doesn't really get old eventually. Um, but they have a lot of other levels as well. Um, now, we're talking about the physics. With this, it, or at least how I currently have this set up, you can't really, like, damage your quad and then, like, not be able to fly. Like, it's just... And I think... I'm guessing people didn't really like that very much because liftoff changed that, and then this one is kind of the same way. But you, you might be able to change it in the settings. I'm not totally sure. I think it's fine how it is because, I mean, you can kind of estimate, like, okay, if I fly directly into this, you know, probably in real life I'm probably going to have some issues, at least some broken propellers, so... You know, I probably don't need to, like, simulate that because it just kind of makes it annoying because you have to, like, restart the game or whatever. Or restart the, restart the level. All right, so that is just one example of the free, of a freestyle level, how you can fly freestyle. Another thing, they have this menu here, which is kind of weird at first because there's, like, all these random, uh, random panels. Um, but let's look at the controller sensitivity right here. Now, check this out. So this says Betaflight 4.0.0. I'm not sure if it is actually like, I'm not, I don't know if that's for looks or if they actually have taken stuff from the you know recent Betaflight. In any case, you can see here, you have your pitch, you have your roll, you have your yaw, and then you have your throttle. Now for this one, again, we're flying a larger, heavier quadcopter. So I have my throttle mid at, at uh, set to one and throttle expo at 50%. And so this gives me a little bit more, like more of a curve right there. And so um, this way um, I can, um, what am I trying to say here? Because it's heavier, I need a little bit higher of a throttle, um, just like kind of all the time. So it sort of mimics what I'm used to by increasing how high the throttle is for this one. Anyway, you probably didn't need that much detail. But the point is that here, uh, up here in the custom thing, you can have three different custom profiles. So I've been using uh, the custom setting two that I've created for most, for like all of my uh, the racing stuff that I've been doing, and I've just gotten used to it for, for all kinds of flying. But you notice here that you have the R, the pitch and the roll rate. Notice that they change independently of each other. See, that's what you can do with this, which is huge, very big deal, because that is how it is in real life. In, a, in the beta flight simulate or on the beta flight configurator you can change all three different um axes but you know pitch roll and yaw all separately so that is very important in any case these are the settings that you can change and i think that they are better than liftoff because you have more control over them and the reason why these are shaking around by the way that's because uh, the my gimbal sensors they're just not the most precise and they're doing a little shaky dance just a little bit but that's okay and then also you have your controller setup so you can go through the whole setup process and kind of get rid of um, any shakes and and that sort of thing uh one thing a uh, one thing i forgot to touch on on liftoff is the fact that you can uh, have an overlay for the sticks and i do like the sticks overlay we can do that here as well you can see here i i've turned down a lot of this stuff details are low things are low so it's gonna it, it could look better um but i just want my machine to be able to handle it better let's see options okay here we go in the options so you can change your camera tilt you can change all this other stuff you know standard game options and then we have so prop wash is set to medium and it, it is noticeable. Uh, camera noise, I have turned that off, but you can turn it on. So controller overlay. I'll go ahead and turn the controller overlay on for you um, because I think that could be helpful. It's kind of weird because they actually show a controller instead of the little box with the with this transmitter, with the little dots that represent the transmitter. Just to give you an idea here. So we've got, this is what we're doing right here. That's, maybe that's actually more helpful. I don't know. Eh. In any case, that's all the, the that's the only option that they have for the transmitter overlay. So there we go. All right, back here in the main menu, let's go into solo race right here, and then let me just. I'm just gonna do what I started off with, like the very first 
thing racing thing that I did and we're gonna have more videos about racing and stuff in the near future if you're interested in that let me know in the comments um, but a walk in the park this one right here oh what what's that's my best time right there uh, yeah it's a little bit more than orange stuff uh, but uh, 11109 so if you can get to 11109 let me know in the comments or let me or just let me know what your time is anyway it's Rusty, because I, I, uh, ooh, 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 because <laughs> I, I haven't uh, played this in a little while here. But um, see, you notice, notice how the uh, we, well, we have these cones on the ground, like in real life. Oh no, oh no, I didn't even go through it. But we have these cones on the ground, and then we have the diamond that says, "Hey, this is where you need to go," and then we have this red blur which I like because it's saying go through here and then it tells you where to go afterwards. I mean, of course, once you once you do the track, you, you just learn the track, but I find this very helpful. Obviously, this is a very small track and, you know, it's not a big deal um, to, to figure out where you're going. Ooh, oh man, oh man. Okay, I am obviously not I'm obviously not focusing on the uh, the racing aspect right now. I'm mostly focusing on the talking aspect. Oh. So intense when you're like trying to how to do oh didn't beat my fastest time well that's fine i haven't been practicing much um oh man what a rush what a rush this time let's change our quadcopter so these are the different selections of quadcopters you can try i have not tried them all uh, but you've got like three inch four inch class and again click and drag to go through this um five inch class six inch class and then seven inch class which is the drl racer four okay so let's grab like the rotor riot uh cl1 so we're flying around the uh rotor riot cl1 frame five inch quadcopter as opposed to the seven inch DR drl racer four and you know it feels uh i do notice like it is lighter um it's not like a necessarily a racing frame but it is definitely lighter it does handle a little bit differently um but I think actually these rates still work pretty well with it. Um, they're maybe a little bit slower than what I would do for freestyle. But, you know, honestly, after after trying lower rates for racing, it really makes me think like for the for kind of freestyle stuff that I want to be doing, which is like more kind of slow, smooth stuff. I'm thinking about definitely lowering my standard freestyle rates. I think with these particular rates, if I was going to do freestyle, I would want a little bit more expo. Get them a little bit mushier, actually, because precision is not necessarily as important to me for freestyle as as having like nice smooth movements and you know mostly being able to um, you know, control the quad right where I want to go. So not as much technical stuff, more smooth kind of flying. You know, sort of stuff, something like that. Whoa. Well, there you have it, folks. Those are three popular simulator options, and my personal favorite is the DRL Racing Simulator. The question I have is, what's your favorite simulator? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, let me know also. Very cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. If you like what you see and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Ah, thanks for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.